everybody doing tonight, huh? Thank you for coming into Cafe Quota. I sure love being back here. Thank you. How you doing? Nice to see everybody. Boy, am I lucky. You know what I get to do? Play with these two guys tonight. Yeah. Do you know, you know these guys? So, you know, Devin and I have played together before. <coughs> oh, excuse me. That was that last uh, drink I had. <coughs> uh, but I've uh, had the privilege of uh, meeting this young blood on my right, uh, uh, Matt Blair, right here, our piano player tonight. Now, do you know Matt? And, and so, so Matt, I haven't played with Matt, but I know his teacher. <laughs> I played with him a lot, Bill Carruthers from uh, Lawrence University, where, where he studied with him. It's, uh, and also, I've played with him quite a bit the last what, couple of years now, right? Yeah, so we played together. and. He says, man, you got to check this kid out from Madison. He's right from here, Madison, Wisconsin, Matt Blair. And he says, this guy is playing as, you know what he said, musician terms. <laughs> so I said, all right, let's bring him on, man. So last night we played uh, in Milwaukee at a great, great club called uh, Bar Central. And that was the first night we played together. And, it, and thank you, man, for your music. You, you, were, you killed him. You dropped him last night. So it's... <laughs> I was going, yeah, man, right here, Madison. <laughs> Young blood, come on. So I'm going to make it, I, now that I talk so good about him, I'm going to kick him to the curb and make, a, make him get us in this song. <laughs>
Mm-hmm.
I'll buy a drink for anybody who guesses what movie that's from. Come on, you all, well, us old guys know this. Yep, Days of Wine Roses, but what movie is it from? Jack Lemmon won the frickin' Oscar from that movie, man. Remember that? What's it called? The Days of Wine and Roses, it's a movie. <laughs> yeah, man, so, Jack Lemmon. I don't know. See, that's before you guys' time. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's do. Uh, let's do. Uh, you know what I want to do? I, I, I did something in, in sound check earlier. I don't know if some of you guys were here, but um, this is a Charlie Parker composition. He, you know, in the old days, man, they used to stick junkies. Like Charlie Parker was a junkie, so they stuck him in a, in a loony bin, you know, in Camarillo, out in Los Angeles. So they wouldn't, they didn't have any drug counseling they do now, the great help that we have now. In the old days, he used to stick guys in the loony bin because they, they couldn't figure it out. But he was a junkie, and this is called, he wrote this <laughs> while he was in like doing rehab. It's called Relaxing at Camarillo. Camarillo is a, is a mental institution out, outside of Los Angeles. So I like this line. Maybe, maybe I can play it right. You know, I didn't play it right in the solid check, but I'll try it now. <laughs> let's, let's walk a blues in. Let's walk one in. Uh, 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 two, three. <laughs>
Devin Drapka on drums, man. Yeah. See, that's how we like to roll here at Cafe Cota, man. You know, we just... You get in that place and you, and you roll the space, you know? So, and that's what we like to do. I look at him and he says, I got this. You know, I look at him and he said, oh, you, I got something for you. <laughs> I love being between these, these guys, man, because they kick the old man in the ass, you know, a little bit. <laughs> so, um, great being back here. Uh, <clears throat> I'm trying to think the last time. Were you here? Ben Sidron was here. Were you here on that show? Uh, Sidron was here, and I played with Ben Sidron for many years. Some of you guys. Anybody here at that show? Yeah. I mean... And Ben, of course, I, I don't know, is Ben playing here a lot? I, I don't know if he's got like, he used to have that steady gig in Madison. Um, what's the name of the Cardinal Club? Remember that? Yeah, the Cardinal. Yeah, and I heard, but it reopened. Some young guys got, is that right? Yeah. That's cool, man. I mean, that was a great space. We lost a lot of brain cells in there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to find them, but I don't care. You know, those are the those were the ones that uh, you know left early. So, but you know what? I mean, it's nice to be back in this space. I mean, how about this space, Cafe Coda, man? What, what isn't it something, man? The community, what the, what they've done. You know, all the great musicians come in here and uh, being associated with these people and and Jan Lynn. You know, talking to her today, and I don't know if she's here. Maybe she is. Maybe not. You know, he said, okay, you got it, Willard. Okay, I, I did all the stuff, man. Come on in and play with the guys, you know. <laughs> Probably not here. But uh, what do you think? You want, what do you want to do? What do you feel like? I, I always, yeah, I'm good, babe? Oh, okay, we're going to groove you. He wants to put you in the groove that don't move. Okay. I, I can dig it, young blood. All right. So why does he do that to me? He said, hey, maybe he can play this. <laughs> hey, wow, we'll put him in that space. He's good. <laughs> okay, Matt Blair, put us in there, Matt Blair. <laughs> <laughs>
The young blood's throwing stuff at the grandpa, right? <laughs> I, talked, I talked about a story. That, that, that song is called Good Bait. And, you know, we're all fishermen here in Wisconsin, you know. By golly, we go fishing. And uh, if you got good bait, we've got to catch a fish, right? If we don't have good bait, you go down the first day, you know, you got wrong bait, you don't catch anything. But you come back the next day, you got the right bait. Maybe you dug up some worms in the background, you know, background, and uh, and you threw it out there. And every cast, you get a bait. So you know, you get a fish. So good bait. That's called good bait. And that's uh, who wrote that, man? You, Tad Dameron. That's right, Tad Dameron, great piano player, wrote that good bait. I like this. It's kind of like you're in my living room, you know, and you're like uh, I can talk to you. Like uh, it's great, man. I have a house, man, with a nine-foot Baldwin piano, and we have parties like this, man. And we don't have a microphone because we holler over the top, you know, everybody, because they're all partying, they're all half shit face, you know. And so, but it's so nice to be here, man, back at Cafe Quota, um, you know, with, with all the great people here, and they're doing such a great job for the community here, and it's an honor for me to be back here. Give them, give them a hand, yeah. You're probably thinking, wow, these guys are really playing groovy, but can they burn? <laughs> right? See, that old man still burn. <laughs> See? We got a, uh, inquiring minds want to know. He said, yeah, we've been playing some stuff, you know. So I think we ought to, you know, we got to prove them wrong, man. They say, can they still burn? I don't know. They haven't done shit tonight for burning. Well, let's burn one. Let's uh, let's make them pay attention to us, okay? Instead of we going out there, let's let's bring them back in. This is going to be uh, a Joe Henderson composition. And boy, when I heard this song growing up, I went, "Oh man, I got to learn that." I still haven't done it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and you know and. and, and and Matt Blurry busted my traps on this earlier. He said, you, you still haven't done your homework, have you, Grandpa? You know? So. But um, I said, man, I'll be better tomorrow, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Joe Hen, man, one of the greatest. All the sax, so Village Vanguard in New York in the 70s. If Joe Henderson was playing, the place was filled with saxophone players. There was not even, you know, anybody other than a saxophone player in there because Joe Henderson was a maniacally in inventive, creative genius, and everything was different at all times. So, I mean, he, uh, he'd be playing there, you know, you'd, you'd have, uh, oh, man, I mean, everybody was in there. All the, sax all the musicians wanted to hear because they, they couldn't figure him out. You know, he, he, everything was different, man, every night. And so he'd be in there for two weeks with a trio, right? The, the great record that he did with, with the trio, you know, no piano, which gave him a bunch of freedom, man. And so saxophone player said, what is this guy thinking about, man? You know, what is he doing, you know? So uh, this is one of the songs he wrote. Anyway, I'm, I'm digressing because I, I love Joe Anderson. I love Joe, man. Mm -hmm.
Devin Dropka on drums. Devin Dropka, he didn't drop a beat all night, man. He's just, I love saying that. I, that's kind of my go-to thing, man. <laughs> and, you know, how about the young Matt Blair from Madison's own? So, so you've got, you got to tell me again, what you're, you're studying, you're, you're at uh, the university, right? And so uh, turn around and talk to him. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to make him do this, right? So you're studying, you're getting your master's degree? or yeah. That's cool, man. So who are you studying with? I mean, who's the teacher over there? He used to be uh, 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 a great bass player. Uh, um. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, pianist named Johannes Wellman. Cool. Johannes Wellman? Beautiful. You're studying with him, yeah? You guys know him? Yeah. So, uh, so tell me about... Uh, 
when you studied at Lawrence with Bill Corrida, a great piano player that I grew up with up in Minneapolis. But so how was that? How was how was that maniacal, crazy guy that have you as your? <laughs> He, well, he's an awesome player, but it, so did he nurture, do, you know, he, he's got a way of nurturing things in people. He won't say, you don't want to play like me, man. Yeah. He's like, play like you, yeah. you know. It's, I mean, that's what I, I got from Bill Curley. His instructor was is a beautiful guy that me and Dave King and, uh, and Curley's, you know, we played the Village Vanguard and all over the, all over the place together. And I think, I think you, you saw us. At some some point up when in your in my in my misspent seniorhood and your misspent youth. <laughs> the old artist quarter, yeah. Wow, man. So well, congratulations, man. Go go get that degree, get the money too, man, because you can always do this stuff, you know, right? Isn't that right, Devin? You can always get the go get the money, man. You know, <laughs> always have something to fall back on. Uh, uh, man, I'm sorry for the meandering, but it's like you're in my living room, you know, so I don't care. And uh, you know what I really love about being here? They, they actually let me do this, you know. <laughs> it's still like, show business, come on, you know. Um, you know what I want to do, man? I, uh, uh, um, Let's take them out. With, let's do one more. How are we doing for time here? Are we good? Have we played an hour yet? Are you guys happy? Can we take a break or no? I don't know. Are you that's, that's, I guess that's the key. You know, whether, what time it is? I don't know what time it is. You know, but we're going to do an Oscar Peterson tune, which I grew up with, um, you know, Oscar, seeing Oscar my whole life and uh, very inspirational for me and uh, my family and my brother Ricky, who is the keyboard player. I gotta, I'm digressing right now, sorry. But I gotta tell this story. So Stevie Nicks uh, and, and uh, Fleetwood Mac were just out and, and uh, Christine McVie, the great uh, singer of the blues, she wrote all the hits for this, the band, passed away, I think, yet, was it yesterday we were talking about that, yeah. So my brother Ricky's a keyboard player for, for, for them. And, uh, and so, uh, uh, he, you know, he was blowing my phone up today. I mean, it's just uh, crazy. You know, 79, we're all going, Rose. <laughs> you young bloods, you don't know about that yet. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, man, I digress with that. But uh, Ricky sends his love. He knows I'm playing with you tonight, and uh, you know, so he's he's coming up here to Madison. Of course, he's great friends with Ben Sidron, and we've played all over the world together for many years. Ben, Ben, and Ricky, and myself. And uh, anyway, okay, let's go back to Oscar. Now, this I grew up with this song. Sorry, I'm I'm getting so convoluted, man. Because I love I love it being here. This is cool. Uh, Oscar Peterson. There was a song he cut live which uh, one of my favorite mentors and bass players, who, who was probably not much older than me, jo George Mraz. Anybody know George Mraz, musicians in here? Yeah. So George Mraz was always the cat that played so in tune, he, he frightened you, you just wanted to kill him, right? You know, he never fudged around, and his, his intonation was flawless. So I'm not gonna do that tonight. <laughs> <laughs> in case you guys were afraid I was gonna try to do that, you know? Um, but this is a beautiful song, and Youngblood is going to get us in there. This is called Blues for Hamp, and uh, Oscar wrote this for Hampton Hawes. Everybody know Hampton Hawes, the vibe play, uh, uh, great, uh, 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 I'm sorry, Lionel Hampton, not Hampton Hawes, the piano player. We know him too, but Lionel Hampton, the vibe player. So Oscar wrote this for him, and uh, I still want to kill George for this because he played so in tune, okay? <laughs>
Matt Blair on piano, Devin Drapka, the Devin Drapka, the beat on drums. Thank you, and Billy Peterson will be right back. Thank you for your attention. We appreciate you so much. Thank you. We'll be back. We're going to have a drink. Come back.
Thank you for enduring that long break, but you know, we know everybody in here, and so we have to talk to everybody, so, you know. Oh man, we've got so many great musicians here. So you saw us, uh, this bass here has been on um, many recordings that you people are here listening to us back in the 50s and 40s. This bass belonged to Herbie Lewis, who was an unbelievable bass player. And uh, great story about you. You want to hear a story or you want, to, you want us to freaking play? What do you want us to do? So uh, this bass, um, when I was a kid back in the 60s, I played in this jazz club called uh, uh, Cafe Extraordinaire, Coffee House. You know, not, not unlike this place, a lot smaller, except Bobby Jackson, the guy that owned this, this place, would, 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 would recruit the greatest musicians from New York to come in and play, okay? So one of those guys was Herbie Lewis. So I was a kid, I'm 16. Herbie, Herbie was probably 10 years older than me, right? So he comes in, he's playing with McCoy Tyner, right? In this coffee house when I'm a kid, 67, maybe, something like that. And so he and I, you know, I'm, I'm like a, you know, like a one-eyed dog in a meat market. I'm looking at this guy, man, you know, burning his fucking balls off, right? And I, I say, you know, so I, I become friends with him. But he, he's married to a, this, this is an unbelievable story, man. You guys want a story? Okay. So he's, 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 he's married to another girl, but he falls in love with the girl that's doing the fucking uh, 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 door money. Okay? And so, I think 30 years later, he comes back with McCoy, right? And, and plays a club, and, and, and they're both single. Uh, they fall in love. This bass is... Uh, uh, <coughs> Sorry. Whew. I'll get it here in a minute. Uh, but this gal <coughs> has taken money at the door, right? They uh, get married. He passes. You gotta have this space, man. So anyway, my crying bullshit. Herbie Lewis, one of the greatest bass players on the planet. Why I have this shit? And so why, you know, <coughs> sorry. Fuck, why, why am I doing this? <laughs> anyway, Herbie Lewis, one of the greatest bass players, his wife gave me, gave me his bass when he passed. And uh, um, it's an honor to have, you know, the instructor for, the bass instructor at University of Wisconsin-Madison here tonight playing it, and students and stuff, you know, so. But that's what this place is all about, Cafe Quarter, doing this, you know. So, you got 16 up front. We're going to do the bridge on uh, the one I screwed up earlier. <laughs>
Thank you, Devin Drapka. <laughs> De Devin, you dropped in a, 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 a stick there, man. <laughs> Matt Blair on piano, man. Thank you, man. Hey, we got a surprise, man. Jacob, are you here, man, the bass player? Uh, you gonna get up and do a little trio thing with the kids? And a boy. That's what I like. I, I said, hey, get up and play my bass, see if you like it. Maybe you don't want to fucking do it, you know? <laughs> so, anyway, this is Jake. Give me your last name, man. Heineman. Heineman, yeah. Jacob Heineman, man. Studying at, uh, are, are you studying right now? Not right now. Not right now, yeah. So, yeah. all right. It's, it's good to have you. Thank you, man. Yeah. Sitting Thank so, you. these guys uh, have a trio together. So, I, I want to sit out and, you know, listen to them. <laughs> How good they are, because I, I don't want to be scared, but I, I kind of am. <laughs>
Thanks, Billy, for calling me up here. Oh, another one? Can, can I raise the M pin up a little bit?
So how do you like uh, the old bass, man? Beautiful. <laughs> yeah. It has so much sustain. It's like I know you, know. you, you got to get out of the way, but it's got a life of its own. You right. Gotta, right. Yeah. You got to like temper yeah. it, right? right. <laughs> yeah, it's like whoa. Yeah. Dude, slow down. A lot. <laughs> a lot of energy. Yeah. Well, thank you, Jacob, man, thank on bass, you. man. Thank you. Yeah. Matt Blair on piano. Devin Drapka, who never Drapka's a beat. <laughs> I, you know what? I freaking hate playing after those guys, man. You know, now I got to come up and. So, you know, what I'm good at is having a drink, you know, sitting out there. And no, you know what? Really, I love the scene in Madison, man. People come out here and hang out. And, uh, you know, the young bloods, you know, I plan, you always have a scene here, man. It's been never not a scene going on here. For 50 years, I've been hanging out here. Always something going on. You got the young bloods, you know, Matt Blair coming up, you know, you know, Devin, you know. Oh, uh, there's so many cats that come through this place that I don't know if, if uh, I, th I think I think the community might realize it, and, and, and the great teachers and the great musicians that have done so much here too, uh, uh, to put this place on the map. So you know, we always when we're touring around, man, we always go, yeah, let's go to Madison. Man. Hey, there's a new joint, Cafe Coda. You know, we I've been playing different bars here forever. You know. And I, you know, and so I, I come back here, and, and and this place is going on. It's just beautiful to me. And so thank you, Cafe Quarter, and thank you for having us in and having this place.
Oh, thank you. Thank you for indulging us in that. That was kind of a sperm of the moment, you know. We did that. Uh, let's do one more. Let's, I think I, we'll do one more for you. You guys in, in for one more? Yeah, cool with that? I was after kids, man. Who wrote CTA? I can play the head, but I can't remember the name of the guy that wrote it. Jimmy Heath. Jimmy Heath. That's right. We're going to do one more for you. Um, I don't know if this features me. I, I think I play the head. <laughs> 